Hi, welcome to our, orienta our information session for glo the Global Affairs MA program. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, sorry we're getting started a couple minutes late, but we know there's a bit of traffic on campus this evening. Um, what we want to do tonight is go over the logistics for the application, and we also want to talk a little bit about the content of our program. So I'm Lisa Braglia, I'm the director of the Global Affairs MA program. With me is Stephanie Lister, who many of you may have corresponded with already. She's our graduate coordinator. And we also have Samira Lloyd, who's a graduate of our MA program. And um, hopefully we all have some different information and expertise for you. We can answer some of your frequently asked questions. We can direct you to some more resources and we can help you get prepared to make an application and hopefully um, maybe in the fall or next spring help you enroll in the program. So the Global Affairs MA program is a 30 credit no thesis program that is ideal for both part-time and full-time students. It's an interdisciplinary program which um, allows you to take classes from among the many different graduate programs at Mason. And we can tell you um, a little bit more in depth about how you can do that and what that means for your future as both a person preparing for a career or transitioning into a new career. So, um, uh, just tell you a little bit more about some of the highlights of the program. Uh, one great thing about Mason is that where, well, the Global Affairs program is one of the most diverse programs in a university that's already a diverse place. So you'll have um, people in your class who are of uh, many different academic backgrounds, people of many different ages, um, people with different career interests, and that really makes for an incredibly rich environment. And since I'm the professor and not another student, let me let Samira say a little bit about that classroom experience in the Global Affairs MA. Of course. One of the best experiences um, I had while being a student here at Mason was that diversity in the classroom. Being able to sit in a class with someone who just graduated um, with their bachelor's degree, but also being in a classroom with someone who perhaps um, has been a career person for the last 20 years and are uh, getting their master's degree right now, really kind of uh, provided for the environment where many different opinions um, came into the classroom, came into the discussion, and enriched the, the learning experience um, so much that I, I enjoyed it and learned so much from it. Um, also important to all of this is networking. I have contacts uh, from people from all over the place, um, different career paths, and when I graduated and decided to look for a job, they were my contacts. They were the people that I reached out on um, social media and said, hey, do you have anything in your field or in your company or wherever you happen to work that I can look into and perhaps look for a job there? So there are a couple of different things to think about here. Making friends, expanding your network, and learning as much as possible from these people that come from so many different backgrounds. So a question that we often get is, you know, we have applicants who say, yes, I'm very interested in global affairs. And the question people often don't feel as comfortable asking is, what exactly is global affairs? So we want to kind of put out there that it's the study of the cultural, political, and economic dimensions of globalization. We look at complex global problems in their historical and regional specificity. And you're going to do this through your core classes with us in the Global Affairs program and then in a specialization with the different departments and programs all across the university. We're going to look more specifically at the curriculum in a couple of minutes, 
But first, I think we're going to look at some of the logistics of the application. So we'll let Stephanie do that. Hi, everyone. So you will be able to apply for the Global Affairs Master's Program through the Office of Graduate Admissions website. The application fee itself is $75 and you can apply either for the fall or the spring semester. Once you submit your online application, you'll be given access to an admissions self-service portal where you'll be able to upload all of your application items. And now I'll go over our different application requirements. For the online application, you'll be able to submit your application and then um, once you receive access to the admissions self-service portal, you'll be able to upload unofficial transcripts. For your unofficial transcripts, the Office of Graduate Admissions requests that the transcript identify the name of your institution, and you have two options for submitting your unofficial transcripts. You can either log into your home institution's portal and download a copy, and upload it, or if you have a hard copy of your official transcript, you can scan it and save it as a PDF and upload it to your application portal. For the next requirement, we require a goal statement. The goal statement is a two-page statement where you can outline your interest in the program in Global Affairs, your education, your background, and if you know what you want your master's specialization to be, and anything else you feel is important to the committee, to let the faculty committee know that you are able to indicate in your online application. The next requirement is a writing sample. This is a recommended application item. It's not required, but there are certain types of applicants who can submit a writing sample. For example, if you have a major that was in the natural sciences, or if you have not had coursework in the humanities, submitting the writing sample is an optional requirement for you. And um, we have some more information on our website. If you go to globalaffairs.gmu.edu, click on prospective students, and then over there in on the left side, we have our application FAQs, and we have a little more criteria listed there as to what you can indicate in your goal statement and also in the writing sample. And again, if you have any questions about these requirements for the goal statement or the writing sample, please feel free to email me at globalma at gmu.edu, and I would be happy to answer any of your questions. For the other application requirement, um, you can upload a resume or CV. The next requirement is two letters of recommendation. For the letters of recommendation, you are able to indicate the names of your recommenders in the online application and their email addresses. And then the system will send them a link to the recommendation and they'll be able to upload them online. For recent graduates, if you just recently graduated with your bachelor's degree, we request that you obtain letters of recommendation from professors. And if it has been a few years since you graduated with your bachelor's degree, you are able to submit professional letters of recommendation. And again, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me. The last requirement is a foreign language competency. There are several different options for fulfilling this requirement. If you have a bachelor's or a minor in foreign language, if you have taken a foreign language class at the advanced level, at the 300 or 400 level, if you attended an institution where the language of instruction is not English, such as your high school or another college abroad, and um, the last option is through an uh, outside entity from George Mason called Language Testing International. They have an option for an oral proficiency interview. And for some languages, um, the oral proficiency interview is offered online, or you can take a test with a live telegram tester in the 
I proctor those exams through our office. Um, if you have any questions about this requirement for the foreign language proficiency, or if you're not sure if you are meeting this requirement during the time of your application, please feel free to reach out to me and I'm going to be happy to answer any of your questions. I believe that is all for our application requirements. Thanks so much. I know a lot of people have some anxiety, especially about the goal statement, the writing sample. We do, we did realize that, and so we put a lot more specific guidelines for those on our website. But if you wanted some more direction on that, you can definitely feel free to send us an email or give us a call and we can help you out a little bit more with those. So I'll talk a little bit um, more about the curriculum. So 18 credits of the core courses are with us with the Global Affairs faculty. We teach you those classes. Um, a couple of the highlights would be um, an interdisciplinary research methods class that we have. And students really enjoy that class because you're going to get your qualitative and quantitative methods together in that class. And um, another highlight on the completely opposite end of the spectrum, perhaps, would be our seminar abroad. And that's a two-week course that we teach um, in an international location. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit more in a second. But So that is 18 of the 30 credits. And then the other 12 credits are the specialization. And we have the examples of the specializations here. And with the specializations, you're going to be able to choose from courses across the university. So that'll be at our Arlington campus and the Fairfax campus. The classes are all going to be, and this includes the core classes as well, your classes are all going to be in the evening or the late afternoon. So the earliest the classes are going to be is going to be around 4.30 in the afternoon and then again another, the other time period for classes is at 7.20 in the evening. So it's really ideal for people who are working and in fact, a great percentage of our students work full time. So the um, schedule is very accommodating for that. So um, Samira, did you want to say a little bit about the process of choosing the specialization itself and also choosing the specialization classes? Yes, of course. Um, to me, at the beginning of every semester, um, those were some of the most favorite classes I would take because I got to choose what I wanted to study. Um, and this is not kind of choice that I had when I was in my undergrad. Um, interestingly enough, um, I um, had a background in geography, um, uh, human geography specifically, and GIS, but I didn't want to quite pursue the um, Master's of Science degree that was offered here at Mason. I wanted something that was a bit more um, human geography related. And this gave me an opportunity to pursue the uh, global population and geography specialization. While within that, I was also able to concentrate a little bit more on um, current climate issues, environmental policy, um, global and health uh, classes, and really be able to hone my interests as well as um, specialize in the field that I wanted to do. And, and being able to choose that was something that was absolutely most valuable um, in this degree program. Also, um, classes are chosen by the Global Affairs um, staff, and those are posted on their website. And to me, it was almost like opening a present at the beginning of every semester <laughs> because then I was able to go and choose classes from so many different um, schools as well. So global affairs, um, environmental policy, a global and community health classes, and I was able to choose time, professor, when I wanted to take it, and working full time um, and, and, and having that flexibility really meant a lot 
that helped me graduate as planned. So you won't be able to really read it here, but this is just meant to show you that we have these lists available on our website and you can access lists right now from um, the past several semesters. We go through all of the classes that are being taught in a given semester when the schedule of classes comes out. So the schedule of classes for you know the fall semester comes out in March-ish and um, then we examine that schedule and then we break the classes up into the different specializations that we have the, the prefix and number of the class, the name of the class, the day it's being taught, the time it's being taught, and then the campus it will be taught on. And then you're taking a total of 12 credits, probably only one or two classes in a given semester is when you'll choose. The interesting thing that will happen here is that even if we have many people who are conflict and security specialization, no one will really look the same as each other because you're putting the specialization together yourself based on the courses that you put in your specialization. And because of the nature of the specializations, there's a lot of flexibility. But there's not, how we say, like too much flexibility. You're not out on your own finding your own classes. You're choosing your own classes from the lists that we put together for you. So one conflict and security person might be very interested in um, migration issues. Another conflict and security person might be very interested in terrorism and counterterrorism security issues. Okay, thank you. Another aspect of the um, curriculum would be the seminar abroad. So that's another thing a lot of people look forward to. So that's a three credit course that's required that is taught in an international location. One of our faculty will take you to the international location. We offer two options a year, one during the winter break, so that's in January, and then one in the summer. The summer dates are chosen so that you will still be able to take advantage of coursework in the other summer terms. Um, the themes of the uh, seminars abroad are meant to have general appeal to everyone in the program. So they're not specific to only certain specializations or certain students interested in certain regional issues. They're meant to have a broad appeal across all of our students. So let's look at a couple of the um, past ones that we've gone on. So we've gone to Havana, Cuba in the summer studying um, foreign investment and global integration. We've gone to Peru, and we'll come back to that one in a second because I know that that's the trip that Samira went on, and that was a summer trip. We've gone to South Africa, and that was a winter trip studying uh, community development. Three cities in Mexico studying uh, markets and security. That was a summer trip. Sweden and Finland studying international security, and that was a summer trip. Madrid and Sevilla, Spain, studying Europe at a crossroads. That was a summer trip. And actually, we're repeating a version of that this summer to um, Madrid and Barcelona. Tbilisi, Georgia. And why don't we uh, hear a little bit from a student who's actually gone on one of these seminars abroad. Of course. Um, so I traveled with um, my classmates to Peru. Uh, this was summer 2015, I believe. Um, it was one of the best experiences in my perhaps both bachelor's and master's degree programs that I attended because it provided me with the in-person, hands-on experience that really taught me more than perhaps any classroom experience could have. We prepped before we traveled, read papers and a couple of books just so we were informed on the topic that we were covering 
we travel with a professor from Latin American, American studies, um, and looked at 1980s conflict in Peru, the communist insurgents and human rights violations that kind of stemmed from that conflict. For me, particularly, I was very interested to be in Lima and see their urban development, see how this city has grown so much in such a short amount of time and to be able an in-person visit and talk to people that live in the city slums or are activists in their own communities that make their communities better. And these are individuals that still have to carry water to their huts every day or that are still struggling to get electricity to their little neighborhoods. We also travel to an indigenous community village where particularly interesting for me was uh, organic farming and how uh, these individuals deal with uh, raising crops in high elevations and dealing with perhaps water pollution or just being a bit on the other side of the track when uh, it comes to development. They very much still live without electricity. There's no heating in the homes. We spent the night there and it was just eye-opening for someone who comes from the United States and travels to that kind of environment. Kind of gives you that personal experience as to how other people live. And we also have fun. We travel to Cusco and um, Machu Picchu and had the best time, ate the best food, had roommates which I have never had in my life, and, and kind of the whole experience of traveling, experiencing, doing it in the group and learning so much was absolutely phenomenal. Great, I'm glad to hear, yes. hear about that. The last thing we wanted to mention is something that's very important to us in the program. You have your academics, you have your, you know, the foreign language skills, we have the seminar abroad, but the reason why a lot of people are getting their graduate degrees is because they're very interested in developing their skills to further themselves on a career path. So professionalization is very, very important to us in the program. So we really look towards always integrating opportunities for your professionalization. So we integrate workshops into the classrooms and also into extracurricular opportunities. So um, I'll just mention one thing that we're that we've been doing, and I saw here I have a handy little poster that could help me talk about that. Um, we have our actually coming up in April this year, and then we have it annually. Our um, alumni career fair is one thing that we do, and um, it's where the employers are actually our own MA alumni, and um, it provides for something that Samira was talking about earlier, a great networking opportunity. It shows you what our actual graduates themselves are doing with their MA degrees, and it shows you, you know, the opportunities that you can have, and also gives you concrete contacts out there in the, in the working world um, to give you, you know, a hand up into to the kinds of career paths that are truly, you know, concretely available to you. So um, I think we're going to move into uh, answering some frequently asked questions that you might have about the program and the application process. One of our um, common questions that we get from applicants who are applying to our program is, can I visit a course? And the answer is yes. If you um, would like to request to come in and sit in on one of our graduate seminars, it's a really good opportunity to learn a little bit more about the classes. Um, and if you look online on our website, if you go to globalaffairs.gmu.edu and click
click on Prospective Students, there's a link on the left where you can submit your class visit request. And we allow the prospective students to sit in on the first hour of, of our graduate seminars. Um, one other thing that I do as the uh, graduate coordinator for this program is um, I send out a weekly digest to all of our students, usually on um, Tuesday afternoons, where um, I let you know things that are going on around campus and also um, other important updates, either from our program or from those were the only things that I thought would be important to talk about. But um, now I'll move on to the next slide where we just go over our application deadlines. So if you are interested in applying for the fall, fall semester, we ask that you submit your application by March 15th. And if you are interested in applying for the spring semester, we ask that you submit your application by October 15th. It doesn't mean that you have to have a completed application by those deadlines, but if there are aspects of the application that you're not able to complete by the priority deadline, please reach out to us at globalma at gmu.edu to let us know. And if you have any other questions, you can also feel free to contact us anytime at globalma at gmu.edu. And thank you all for coming out. And um, again, you know, we'd be happy to have you visit and um, be happy to host you and we'll, you know, uh, answer any of your emails as well. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.